Now for question number 11, February, March 2020, IGCSE paper 2. Um, this question, question number 11, is one about transformations. And this is a topic that also has changed um, quite a lot in the new syllabus in that they have taken out some things like uh, transformation matrices. Um, so matrices, in fact, the whole topic of matrices has been taken out and therefore transformation matrices was also taken out. So it's been simplified a lot. And before that, there used to be something called share and stretch that was taken out previously. So now we've only got things like translations, reflections, rotations and enlargements in the in the syllabus and it's kind of got to be a bit more basic so now here we have um, a grid with a shaded um, figure a and then you got b c and d which are you know figures that look kind of some in some some of the cases congruent some cases similar to a and you got to find the transformations mentioned You've got to describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. Okay, so shape A onto shape B. Now, shape A onto shape B, um, of course, this is not a translation. It hasn't just been picked up and moved around and kept in the same way. And neither is a reflection. There's no way it's going to reflect and give you that type of shape there. In, in any sense, it will do that. Okay, so... It's, of course, it's not an enlargement because they look like they're exactly the same size. Um, but it looks like it's a rotation. It looks like it's a rotation. And the way to tell whether it's a rotation or not is to do the following. And I'll just show you exactly what you can do. If you kind of like trace the shape. And having, gr having um, tracing paper in this type of question is something that is quite useful. So I'm going to trace the shape. Okay, as best as I can. It's not that accurate. Okay, and I'm going to do this just to uh, keep it all together. All right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate it around and see, does it look the same as that? Or it's not going to be in the right place, but does it look the same as that when I rotate it around? And you can see that there is a position where it looks exactly the same as that. So it's definitely a rotation because uh, that's going to be a result of it rotating. But rotation is not just described by saying rotation. It's described fully by saying it's a rotation and what angle it's rotated through. Now we can tell the angle must be 90 degrees and it must be clockwise. Okay, for it to be a rotation like that, that's what we can tell. Okay, so you can see that it's 90 degrees and clockwise. And it looks the same. So it's definitely 90 degrees. It's, it's definitely a rotation. It's definitely 90 degrees. It's definitely clockwise. 90 degrees clockwise. Or if you want 270 degrees anti-clockwise. If you start from here and you go um, anti-clockwise, you've gone through you've gone through 90, 180, 270. But of course, it's much easier for you to say 90 degrees clockwise. All right, so we've got the rotation part. We've got the um, 90 degrees and clockwise part. There's one thing left, which is probably the more, more kind of like tricky thing in all of the uh, topic of transformations, to find the center of rotation. Okay, that's the tricky part of this particular topic. And what we need to do in order to find the center of rotation is we need to do the following. Let me just move that out of the way for now. I have here something prepared which is, um, let's say this is a, a piece of um, tracing paper. Okay, so if we want to find the center of rotation, what we're going to do is, I'm going to put this, trace this on top of the tracing paper, which I'll do by grouping them together. If it wants to do it, let's see. second okay okay now what I can do is I could try to think about a place where I can rotate this whole shape around until this fits exactly over there so I've got to try to find a point through which I can rotate the shape around so that it fits exactly over this shape B 
and sometimes it's not that um, easy to do. You got to think. There are some math, some geometrical methods you can use, but they're kind of complicated here. So what, what I know for sure is the center of rotation is going to be somewhere in this area over here. I can see that when you rotate it, it has to be rotating from somewhere in this area over here. It's not the origin. Okay, if it was the origin, then this shape, and we can try it actually, although we have to try it in a slightly different way because this thing will just rotate from where it is. Okay, so um, I have to put this origin in the middle of this particular thing for it to rotate around it. Okay, so what I have to do is, I'll just do this. Ungroup it, can I ungroup it? Yes, like this. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, just imagine I thought that it was the origin. Okay, so let me put the tracing paper over um, so that the origin is right in the middle. Okay, so let's try and do that if we can. So that's like six. How big is this thing? Okay, so from minus eight to six, minus seven to seven. That's in the middle on that side. And that's from seven. Kind of like in the middle on that both sides. Okay, let me see if that works. If the origin, if that's the origin. kind that's all right it's not bad so now if I thought that the center of rotation was the origin just imagine I thought that then when I rotate this around okay with this one second okay when I rotate this around with that as a center where that dot is, then this should fit exactly over that, and it doesn't. You see? So it's not the origin for sure. Okay, so you, a good thing to do is to try the origin. So what you do is you trace the paper on, you trace it on tracing paper. It's good to have tracing paper in this exam, and you're allowed to bring it in with you, and you basically trace the shape that you have to rotate, and you put the pencil on the center that you think it is the center, and then you just rotate the tracing paper around, and you see, does it take me over exactly the outline of the shape that I want it to be? Um, you know, the, the rotated image, and it doesn't. And what we notice is a few things here. All right, we notice we've ended up too low. We've ended up too low. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and go higher up. Okay, you try and go high, higher up. Okay, so if you try and go higher up, let's see what happens. Okay, now... I've got another piece of tra tracing paper that I've already prepared and I'm going to now go a bit higher up and see if it works. So, now, I've now decided to go higher than zero, 00 and I'm going to go to zero, 02. Okay, you could have tried zero, 01, you could have tried, uh, you know, something slightly higher. I'm going to zero, 02. And I'm going to now rotate this shape um, around zero two. So let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, that works. It's just about maybe not quite centered. If you did it properly, it should work. That will take you exactly over the shape okay if I did it properly okay that's good enough that's just a uh, okay so we can see it is zero two that's the center of rotation okay so let me just move this out of the way so we can see what's happening so now that is the center of rotation and if you want to verify what you can do is you can draw an L shape for example from two to minus two and minus two to this corner 
and I can see if I take this L shape and I go I know it's going to be 90 degrees and it's going to be um, clockwise 90 degrees clockwise if I rotate this line 90 degrees clockwise it's going to take me along here four units because that's four units down it's going to be four units across it's going to take me to minus four and this is two across if I rotate it 90 degrees clockwise it's going to be pan pointing down from here two units and you can see that it takes me to exactly the same spot on both of those that corner over here okay where these two meet at right angles on this side opposite the slanted side so we can see that this is actually the center of rotation so it's going to take you maybe a few tries of using the tracing paper to try and get it okay but if you just um, think about the shape you know how it looks where you think the center of rotation we need for for sure we knew it's somewhere in this area we tried the origin it was too low so we went higher if you had for example if you had gone over here you might have gone too far to the left so you keep trying until you find uh, the right spot so we can see here that the center of rotation is zero two okay zero two so the the transformation that takes shape a onto shape b is a rotation so you have to mention it's okay type of transformation and then you say the the it's a rotation of 90 degrees and it's clockwise clockwise okay going the way that the clock rotates and also that the center of rotation is zero two that's enough to get all three marks okay part b says shape a onto shape c now some people they think that that's also a translation uh, sorry a rotation they also they think that that's a rotation as well and there's a there's a big mistake in doing that okay and i'll show you why okay let's just let's just say we 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 kind of uh, agreed that it was a a rotate a rotation okay there's what you what you'll see is you don't actually have to rotate the the whole shape let me take it from here back actually take this back well I'll take this back ungroup this I'm just trying to show you visually how this works. So ungroup. Okay, so I'm going to take this now and move them out of the tracing paper and get rid of these two. One. And whoops, this is one move, does he? Okay. Get this one out of the way. And get this one out of the way. Okay, so now. This is our shape. Now, if it's a rotation, then when I rotate this shape around, there's going to be a position um, that it, you know, looks exactly like the shape C, and it doesn't at all. There's no way that it looks the same. It's like the opposite here. So there's no way that this is ever going to be for C will ever be formed as a rotation of A. So it's not a rotation. Of course, it's not an enlargement because they're the same size. And it's not a translation because the translation would look exactly like the same way up. Okay, if it's translated, it will just look like that. It will just be somewhere else. So if it's not a rotation and it's not a translation and it's not an enlargement, then of course it must be a reflection. And some people can't see that it's a reflection. So what I, what I suggest you do, if you're not sure, is I suggest you take your page and you turn it around um, until these are horizontal with each other. So I'll just give you, I'll show you down here. I took a little picture of this and put it down here. If I was to do this, rotate it around until they are kind of horizontal with each other, then you can hopefully see that this is a reflection. That basically this. Okay, let me put it a bit thinner here, you know. This matches with that. And this with that. And this with that. It's not clicking in the right place. And that with that. Okay, so they they are they are basically it's a reflection. And the mirror line will be exactly halfway between each of these points. So the mirror line is going to go like exactly halfway between all of these is going to be a line that goes like this. It goes like this. 
goes right through the origin and that's the line there okay that is a reflection in this line and if you look at this line it's actually the line y equals x okay so you can see very clearly it is definitely a reflection in this line going across like that through the origin and down okay every point is the same distance perpendicular distance from this line so for example one two three one two three so that point corresponds to that point they're both three units away from the line and the line joining them hits the mirror line per at right angles so one two one two again you one two three four one two three four so you can see it's definitely a reflection and this is the mirror line which is y is equal to x or when y, when x is one y is one when y, x is two y is two y equals x okay so you can see that this is a reflection in the line y equals x okay that's part b then it says describe the transformation that takes you from a to d from A to D. Now this is an enlargement because the thing's got smaller. So it's still called an enlargement even though it's got smaller. And we need to find the center of enlargement and the scale factor of enlargement. Now the scale factor is no problem. All right, We can choose a, po a length on the image and divide it by the length on the image, on the object. So it's like 1 divided by 2. So the scale factor is a half because it's got smaller. So always the image length divided by the object length so one divided by two which is a half and to find the center of enlargement you simply just join corresponding points together i'm going to move this line here out of the way so you don't get confused and for example another pair of corresponding points join them together and where they intersect that's the center of enlargement which is four six four six so for the last one we have three bits of information we say it's an enlargement that's one mark we say that the scale factor of enlargement is equal to a half and we say the center of enlargement was what was it again it was four six four six and there we have answered this question. Okay, so I hope it was, it took a bit of time because I wanted to show you how to use a tracing paper and how to turn the page around a bit when you're trying to work out if it's a reflection. So um, I hope that helped you. So for enlargements, remember, it's image over object. So it's not going to be two, of, two over one. It's going to be one over two. Even if you choose another thing, like for example, here, that's two units, that's four units. Two over four will give you a half. So the scale factor is a half. Because A got smaller to become D, so the scale factor is a fraction less than 1, which is a half. Okay, so there we have the answer. If you'd like to learn uh, or see the other questions in this paper, click on this ic icon over here or this uh, playlist over here. The playlist over here will take you to other questions to do with transformations. And the, the card on the top here will take you to the paper 4. And if you want to subscribe, you can click this button over here. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.